Hi guys, it's Chris at Cork and Crown. I'm back in my cider shed with some more cider to try. And this is a cider, so it's, it's more Ross and White. I make no apologies, I've got lots of things to try, but I found a couple of things. So I was doing things on the online, online shop and I realised uh, there was a couple of things missing. I didn't have the details for to put them in my shop. I went through my notes, couldn't find anything in my notes, went through the films, couldn't find anything in the films. I realised I had no record of these things and they're really good things. So I thought, I'll make a record of said things. And the one I'm going to start with, I actually didn't have a film of it or any notes because I actually opened it live on Instagram with Albert from Ross and White and we did a film about it. Sometime last March, I think, and it's now January, so that was 10 months ago. So I found a case of this, so oh, I've got to put it online, but I had no record. So I'm going to taste it now in a film for you. And it's an interesting one because it's got two things, there's two things about it which are, I've, I've had questions, not necessarily issues, I don't say that, but sometimes I've had questions about whether they're good things or as good as people say, or whatever. But before I talk about that, here it is. It's Kingston Black, 2019, American Oak Cask, from Ross and White. Let's read what it says in the blurb first. Kingston Black is a revered bitter sharp apple that originated in Somerset in the 1800s. Unique for having both luscious acidity and prominent tannins, it has been widely planted despite the tree itself being very frustrating to grow. Such was the quality of the cider that many of us, uh, such was the quality of the cider that many of us persevered, and here we have been rewarded. Fermented in fresh Kentucky oak, the result is a cider of vivid juiciness, aromatic vanilla, big ripe red apples, and a gentle tannic finish. Okay, so the two things I have is, first of all, Kingston Black, hailed as one of the, if not the greatest apple, uh, single sort of variety apple, vintage cider apples by many. Bitter sharp rather than a bit of sweet, so well, reasonable acidity, but great balance, many people say. I've had lots of Kingston Black, that I've actually been disappointed by. Now, I don't know if that's because it hasn't been a great vintage or not from a great cider maker or uh, just that it wasn't, yeah, whatever. There's lots of reasons why. Maybe not be the fault of the apple. Could be other circumstances. But I've been disappointed many times, you know. Uh, yeah, so possibly because my expe expectations were massively high because it's hailed as such a good apple. Um, secondly, bourbon barrels. Bourbon barrels. Now, bourbon barrels... Uh, People seem to think that if you put something in a bourbon barrel, or any sort of barrel, it's going to make whatever you put in it better. That is not necessarily the case. Sometimes you can mask something brilliant by putting it in something like a bourbon barrel, for example, that has lo lots of bourbon characteristic, which will then imbue to the cider, but actually will actually mask the flavour of the cider. And same thing happens with beers as well. All sorts of things get put in these barrels, and then actually you can't taste the best product, which was probably delicious prior to being put in the barrel. So I think, you know... There's two things going on here. Kingston Black, which I'm like, is it the greatest cider apple in the world? And also putting things in a bourbon barrel, bourbon barrel, bourbon barrel, a bourbon barrel. Is that necessarily a good thing to do? So anyway, I opened this online live with um, with um, Albert. So and it was a risky thing to do because I had things going around my brain like I might not like this. And it's going to be a bit embarrassing if I open it live with him with lots of people watching. I don't like it anyway. But we'll open it again now here with you. Sort of. All right, let's open some more for. Pop. So it is obviously sparkling. There you go. There's your smoking gun. Some bubbles rising at the top. So I've had this for a year now. So and it's um, two and a half years old. Two and a half since. Two, well, when was it pressed? Pressed October 2019. October, November, December, January three. So yeah, I mean like two years and three months since it was picked or pressed or both rather. Let's pour it out. Is there anything about the barrel that it was in? Bottled 2020, bottled September 2020. So, yeah. So, yeah. All right. So, let's have a look at it. I can smell it already. <laughs> so, there you go. Quite pale, actually. Quite a pale. It's not as amber and deep as color, in colour as, uh, as you'd expect. But um, I was going to say that's gold. A nice gold, actually. It's just almost going to amber. We're not quite there. So, it's a nice gold. It's actually quite bright. Sparkling as we saw. Let's give it a sniff. So there is a, the merest hint of bourbon. And actually, now I, I, I remembered actually liking it. And I was relieved that I liked it. And um, the bourbon in there is not as strong as, say, in uh, their major D80, 500 mil bottles, the D80 batch. It's got a lot more bourbon, but actually I like that as well. I think it's still balanced. I think it still works. This is more subtle than that. 
well, there's almost a creamy element to this as well in the nose, which I really like. Um, yeah, it's almost like a, there's like a creamy hint of apple. There is vanilla. There's a creaminess and there's that hint of bourbon as well. It's a lovely nose. It's actually not as bang in your face as you expect it to be, which is a good thing. Who likes getting bang in the face? Not me. Right, let's try it. Way too cold, because it's effing cold in the shed. Um, you can tell it's a bit sharp. There is acidity to this. Acidity to this. Really subtle um, bourbon. When it warms up, it's going to be get, get more prominent. There's minerality, um, but there's apple character. There's a cider apple character. There's there's like there's a sweated apple, but fresh. There's a, there's a brightness to it because it's a bit sharp. It's a bit brighter, I think, than you get with many bittersweet single varietals. Um, yeah, in this iteration, you can see why people like Kingston Black. Um, ABV eight percent. So there's plenty of sugar in this, and there's possibly some ABV. It, the ABV has been like knocked up a little bit by residual bourbon in the barrel as well, which there must have been because I can taste it. But it's subtle, it really is. And actually, in this format, in this format, Kingston Black works really well. It's nice, it's light, refreshing, it's crisp, there's apple character, it's lovely. Mere suggestion of tannin actually, but it's, it's been around for a bit, so those tannins would have softened. Salt extremity, really delicate soft tannins on the front, actually. Nothing on the back. Oh, there's almost like a getting like a it's like a pithiness and a storm fruit character on the back of the palette as well, which is really nice. This is light, delicate, quaffable, but it has a complexity as well. The the, the bourbon barrel is so well judged, it is just there. It's it's seasoning it, it's not smothering it, it's seasoning it, it's, it's enhancing, it's working in partnership with the fruit and giving you something which is delicious. So this is how you should do barrel aged stuff. This is how you should do it. It should be subtle and the stuff that you, sh you age in it should be delicious, but it shouldn't be smothered by that thing. This does it really well. This is harmonious. It's delicious. As it warms up, it's going to get better. I absolutely guarantee it. Um, something you probably can't get much anymore. I've got a few bottles. I've got like a case, I think, which I've just put on the online shop. So if you want to get hold of some, go and have a look there because it's probably the only place you're going to get it these days. I mean, you might find it somewhere, but there's not going to be a lot of it around, I'm pretty sure, because there wasn't loads of it anyway. Um, so, yeah, there you go. A Kingston Black in an American cask done properly. We like very much indeed. And there's the label once more, if you want to see it. All right, guys. Thank you for joining my shed for a very enjoyable tasting. I hope you join me again. But until that time, cheers.